Hi there, Electric Starship fans. Thank you for tuning in to our channel once again for another video. Uh, this one is going to be pretty fun because we're going to go on a little trip back in time, a little going back uh, to the beginnings of the Electric Starship Arcade and actually see the plan in action as we go and uh, see a little bit of history of the games, uh, see the family and friends that helped me along the way uh, in different videos. And, uh, you know, I love it. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun uh, once we put this all together. I think this is actually going to be a two-part video just because I don't want to bore you all to death uh, with one huge, long video. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank God. I want to thank uh, my wife, Cynthia, for really helping out so much along the way and believing in me. You'll see from the beginning, this is a very supportive uh, young lady here. Uh, I want to thank my children, uh, Summer and Autumn. Uh, they're in some of the early video here. We'll introduce them here here in a minute. Uh, if you've been into the Electric Starship Arcade, you've seen them behind the bar. My brother, who spent countless nights with me on uh, late, late, like all the way into the next morning working on games. You can see us delirious uh, in the middle of the night in some of these videos. So anyway, a uh, lot of great friends that helped along the way, and a lot of people are helping now. And then you guys, by watching and subscribing, and uh, you guys, my regulars that come in that I love, like family, uh, they are our Electric Starship family. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to take you back. Now this is going to be June or July, I might mention it here in the video, of uh, me and Cynthia talking about our plans of opening an arcade. In this video, I'll say two years, but really close to this, like within that day or week, we decided it was going to take about three years to open and set our sights on the summer of 2020. Who knew we were going to try to open right as a lockdown for a pandemic was ending. Uh, but we stuck to that plan and here we are two years later. And again, couldn't have done it without you. So thank you very much. Um, with that being said, uh, I guess I need to not shock you guys. I'm really a lot grayer now than I was five years ago when this uh, first footage was shot. I think over time you'll see the gray kind of kicking in. Uh, I was uh, Cynthia somehow looks the same. I don't know how she pulls this off, but uh, I'm getting older. Uh, anyway, check it out. See what you think. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm Cynthia. And we are setting off as of July 1st of 20. 17 <laughs> we're setting off to create an arcade it's going to take several years to do we thought we might just video a few things along the way we actually bought two arcade machines earlier and we've been inspired through some going to some different ones and seeing some different things so i'm going to show you the two arcades we have that kind of start this journey that we got two months ago and our idea is to buy a 500 dollars or less arcade machine every month for the next at least two years until we have an accumulation of these arcade machines and then we can open up and we have a lot of cool ideas to do it for a retro arcade so first things first let me show you what we got so far so our first arcade machine is aliens extermination and it wasn't working when we first got it it only cost us five hundred one dollars and one penny and it took me about six days to get it up and running and now it works like a champ. So hopefully one day you'll see this in the arcade and get a chance to play it. The other machine we got is huge. It is a NASCAR team racing machine. It does have a full hydraulic chair and it races is really, really fun. I'm not a huge NASCAR fan, but I actually love this game. Uh, great thing about it was it was $201 and one penny. So. Right now we spent about 700 bucks on these two arcade machines here. And that's the start of this journey. Um, we'll update you on the next video. Thanks. Well, a lot of things to notice from that first video, right? So one, I had no idea how to work your phone or a camera or anything. You're gonna see that that is continuous for the next span of all these videos. There might be one or two that I get the right orientation on. Uh, the next thing is I mentioned the dates obviously that we're going to do this over the course of two years and like i said it took three uh and that was the plan pretty early on but the 500 dollars a month is hilarious because i really did try to stick to being under 500 and keep that budget 
for about three, maybe four months. Uh, after that, it was like, oh, well, I got to buy all these games because it's a lot. And that account for the next three months. And then another game would pop up. And uh, I'm glad we started with a budget, but uh, I'm glad we didn't stick to it as well because a lot of these games have went up so much in price over the last little bit of time. Uh, so that makes it tough. So let's, uh, let's see what we got there. So we got an Aliens and a NASCAR. Now, if you've been to the Electric Starship Arcade, you know that there is no NASCAR in here. Um, I would have loved to have that game in here. It actually moved and rocked, which was super cool. But uh, problematically, the um, I thought somebody might get hurt on it. So we're here in this expansion area that wasn't part of the original uh, plan, which I'm so glad is now. And here's that Aliens. It actually made it uh, into the Starship and is played quite often. Now, over time, I've had to repair the guns and repair the computer and everything like that but it is part of the electric starship still so that original game that i did not buy uh in order to i didn't buy it for an arcade i didn't know i was just buying it for me i wanted it because i thought it was cool and uh, i still do uh but i bought that game for me but it did spark that initial oh i, th I think i can do this and the reason it did was because I had been to a place called Barcadia, and this is years before this, and uh, it was more bar and less arcade, and I thought, wow, do I love the concept, but I'd really like it to be more arcade than bar. Like, we have beer and everything here, but uh, honestly, I like the, uh, I like arcades. I think beer is awesome, and it's cool that now that we're all older, we can drink it and uh, have fun uh, at the arcade while we do it, but anyway. That's the first game, the first couple of games there. And just seeing that initial plan and having dates and prices and things like that. I did a really good job with that at first. You'll see that will, just like anything, it's gonna digress uh, throughout this video. Let's introduce the next one. This is the first time my kids are in the video. And this is the first game we bought after the plan of opening the arcade. Good morning. It's July 2nd of 2017. I don't know why I don't always know that year uh, we're going out on our journey for the first of the monthly arcade machines that are going to eventually build an arcade if that makes any sense at all um, my two daughters have twin girls are 17 they're going they don't know i'm videoing they don't know any of this so i'm uh, putting this all together uh, my grandfather let us borrow his truck wow you really can't see that anyway yeah you can't see the truck but <laughs> It's early in the morning. My kids are already fighting uh, and upset that they're getting up. I don't know why they want to go on this trip with me. We're basically going to Texarkana from Fort Worth. I believe it's a three and a half hour drive to pick up a zombie raid machine. Um, again, you saw the alien and you saw the, uh, the NASCAR machine. So hopefully this one's really cool. Um, if it's one out of a, or I'm sorry, it's 10 out of a hundred as far as collectability, it's it's on the, maybe not so much on the higher end, but it's a really, really nice looking cabinet. I think inside an arcade, a pretty cool showpiece. So uh, just, you know, uh, man, people will probably play it and say, damn, that's kind of boring. But anyway, we're going to find out. So I have pl I've played it a little bit. I have a main machine I built and I played it a little bit on that. And... Um, Anyway, we're going to go pick it up, and we'll shoot a little video while we do it. Thanks. <coughs> Alright, so me and the kids are in the car. We're making our journey on the first here. I already shot a little bit of a video. Um, I said, I'm going to video this thing. This is the first time they know about it. My first question was, so we're really going to do this thing? <laughs> so I hope so. Uh, at the end of this video, um, or when you're watching it, I hope that we have a full-on arcade going. So anyway, we're about to head to Texarkana. Want to say anything? <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> we'll see what we see when we get there then. We're here in Texarkana with Matt. He's given us a zombie raid machine for a great price to start this whole arcade venture off. Say hi, man. How you doing? All right, let's flip this thing around. The machine looks like, I know, we're gonna have to put it on uh, <laughs> on the computer. 
It looks great. Oh, we're taking her home today. So it was a fun trip. Got a. Oh All I don't right. know what the hell it was. So, <laughs> we um, got Zombie Raid up and running today. I mean, it was running the whole time, but it's nice and uh, cleaned up and everything now. So, anyway, that's step one of the uh, arcade. Here's Grandpa. <laughs> All right. So, uh, that was a fun trip, right? We get to go to Texarkana. I get to spend some time with the kids. They are questioning my insanity that I'm actually gonna start this arcade and have a family business. It's kind of a, you know, just out of the blue to them. And uh, yeah, we had a great trip that day going and picking it up. Thanks to Matt and Texarkana. Maybe you're watching this. This would be great to uh, have you see that old footage there. Uh, Zombie Raid's been on the floor just like Aliens from the beginning. We ha It has never spent any time off the floor. It's been a very solid game for us. Again, another gun game. Uh, it needed uh, a little bit of fixing, but uh, overall, and I remember me and Cynthia, 4th of July that year, uh, before the fireworks and everything, we spent all day cleaning that and just in the heat in that little barn there. Other thing I want to do is say thank you to my mother and my uh, grandfather. They um, were integral at, uh, they, they supplied a place for us to store the games. You're going to start seeing the arcade barn or the arcade dungeon, I think uh, Tate refers to it uh, at one point in this video. But they also loaned me a truck and eventually my grandfather gave us that truck. Uh, so you want to talk about not being able to do something without somebody the my mom my grandfather Really helped out a lot uh, Just with the transportation to pick up these games and I mean there'll be times where I'm like I'm coming over at 8 o'clock at night and I'm gonna return with a game at 1 30 in the morning And we're got to open a gate and drive through a pasture to put this thing in the this arcade barn uh, The old warehouse the deep deep storage uh, some regulars uh, hear me refer to it Anyway, sorry about Gunner whining there. Um, so let's look at this next piece. We, we got Zombie Raid. Let's go look at it and see it on the arcade floor. So it's right over here. And I love this game uh, for the artwork and the design. You know, you got the Frankenstein John Cena. You got the little mounted pump shotguns here it's just got a great look to it with the gargoyles on the front and then over on this side uh we have the the big werewolf and uh what a cool game cool marquee you know i buy pieces i buy pieces for the arcade sometimes just for aesthetic purposes i mean the side art means so much uh to the vibe uh and the experience in the arcade so a lot of the curation, uh, you know, I, I have a hard time believing anyone thinks about curation as much as we do here at the Electric Starship. And it's just adding little things to the arcade, making sure all the side art is good, uh, any chance we get, you know, and just being able to see some of that side art. You know, that's why we put games that we do on corners and edges of the arcade, just to add to that flavor you know and zombie raid is huge for that i mean it just looks so cool um anyway so something to think about uh when you're uh, if you're building an arcade you know think about those things because those i think those things mean a lot i may be wrong who knows you know uh, people like it though they seem to so this next portion we're gonna get to uh after matt there uh is us going to pick up an asteroids deluxe you know the funny part of this is when we get to this guy's house, and you can't see this, there, I don't have video of it, I wish I did, but even if I did, I don't know that I could show it on YouTube. Because when we get to this guy's house, he's got velvet paintings of topless women. I'm bringing my wife into this house, and there's like velvet painting after velvet painting after velvet painting of girls. Uh, topless and it is amazing it's just a really fun house to be in uh to see this to pick up this asteroids deluxe so um well yeah just get a little footage of that and then you'll see some of the other games uh eventually here all right so we're on our way to round rock to go pick up asteroids deluxe um it's 6 14 in the morning we have about a three hour drive on a thursday it's July 13th. We're a little ahead of our $500 a month this month because of the 
because the other machines we bought the other day, the one fell and broke in half, and, they, uh, <laughs> and uh, this one here, but well, you we're just going to count it for next month, so then we'll be like right on pace. So it was th it's just $300 for this Asteroids Deluxe, and it's a really, really nice looking cabinet from the pictures, so, and everything's working, so it shouldn't be any project or anything like that. So we're excited. Just got a little road trip ahead of us, about two and a half hours. So we'll update later on. Nice. Thanks. So Cynthia and I <laughs> are here at the Silos Magnolia Shops in uh, Waco. We stopped here after picking up the Asteroids machine. Is that easier? Hey, there we there we go. Go. that might work a little better. Anyway, it's kind of cool. We've never been here before, so since we're in Waco, we're seeing oh, where we Chip, and, uh, Chip and Joanne hang out. Anyway. Well, uh, we added some more arcade, arcade machines to our uh, stuff today. Me and my brother are here. We have an Arctic Thunder going in. We have a change machine. <laughs> and we also have a um, Area 51 Maximum Force that fell and broke. I wish I, I should have. Totally took a picture of that, or took a video of that. Uh, and we have a target terror machine, so uh, hopefully get one of them up and run before we leave today, just so uh, we have something recorded that's working. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's hot in Texas. Talk to you soon. Well, I got target terror and um, asteroids deluxe and Arctic Thunder all working. Target terror is going ape shit right now. Second here. And there's Target Terror. It actually is in the Target Terror cabinet, but it's been upgraded to Target Terror Gold. And there's the Asteroids Deluxe. We just picked up today. That was 300 bucks. The Target Terror was 175. And Arctic Thunder. It needs a little work, but the seat rumbles. The uh, air blows on it. I need to check out the lights on it. And there's a little issue with the throttle, but other than that, that was a $175 game. So, uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good. You know, over here, we got that broken mess of an Area 51 Maximum Force. We got the TV that broke off the top of it during shipping. We got this panel over here, and then obviously all the guts to it down there. Anyway. Got a little progress toward the arcade today, so I'm excited. I really am digging the vintage uh, Asteroids Deluxe. It has uh, a black light that got damaged in shipping. So that's just replacing a bulb, hopefully, and it should be all good. Until next time. Ah, uh, yes. Exhilarating footage, right? Uh, we got a, those videos kind of mixed together a little bit. I tried to line them up where they made a little more sense. Uh, we actually did the trip to get the uh, Arctic Thunder and the Area 51 and the um, Target Terror uh, before we did the Asteroids Deluxe trip and um, we were doing good. We were sticking to that budget and that was really, really cool. Uh, the Asteroids Deluxe is actually just rotated off the floor because we have asteroids on the floor right now. If you can see that over there, right under the Peter Vankman picture. And um, the Target Terror has never made it out of that spot. So in that warehouse, Target Terror is still sitting there. Um, it is just huge. And I never had a good spot for it. Uh, I don't, I don't, you know, it was just a, an inexpensive lot deal at the time. Uh, we do have Arctic Thunder on the floor, but not that Arctic Thunder. We have an Arctic Thunder that we picked up at an auction pretty early on. Uh, in the starships after we were open. So that Arctic Thunder never really made it out either. So it's still sitting in the same spot. Now, since then I've gutted parts off of it to keep this one that we have here in the starship going. Uh, now the Area 51, the worst of the three games that I got there, it had um, broken half. So it has a huge pedestal that the arcade, the monitor sits on with all the speaker box. And then that, that we strapped everything in by the pedestal and that broke off. So if you're ever moving a showcase cabinet, make sure you strap it over the top and strap the 
uh, monitor off, it may save you uh, that, uh, a little bit of trouble. That thing was so heavy, we had to push it off of the the truck and then use my mom's tractor. Um, she has a tractor and I had used the scoop to put it back on the pedestal just because we couldn't lift it. Uh, it was that heavy, guys, uh, with the box and everything and it would have had to maybe take the monitor out. I don't know what we would have done had my mom had the tractor there uh, to put that thing back together. You can see it sitting on its side. And you'll, those are some of my favorite videos because my brother was like, you need to push this thing out. It is a, it's a junk, it's a dump. And when you saw maybe earlier videos in our series uh, here that uh, on that, same area 51 that did make the floor. Let's go look at it. Uh, I mentioned, and even use some of the footage you'll see later in this video, I mentioned that he said, just push it out there. And like a few hours later, we got it up and running. Here it is right here. And I put some really on, awesome neon tea molding on it. Uh, we also have some uh, really fun like bob wire. You don't really get to see it much. And I know we're in the dark here, so. Uh, but anyway, it is on the floor and it's super cool. It actually looks great. People play it all the time. It's nice and loud. It's got a beautiful picture on it. So just remember when you see that, that thing did crash and burn on us uh, on the way in. Um, so anyway, the next little bit of footage you're going to see is us getting a Neo Geo, our first Neo Geo. Now, later on, you'll see the Neo Geo we have on the floor. This particular Neo Geo that I get uh, that, you know, you don't even see much of it, but I ended up, uh, trading it, uh, to Richard Flint Turbo, our Turbo that works here at the arcade. Now we had no idea. We just really met him at that time. So this is our Neo Geo right here. Uh, you'll see me fixing the panels, man, this is hard to do in reverse. You'll see me fixing the panels on this later. So I won't make this footage again. I'll just refer to it, but, uh, we actually traded for, uh, parts we gave, Richard, a little bit of money, I believe, and we traded for parts. Anyway, we got Roston parts for it, for the Neo Geo, and that Roston is right there. Uh, and we love Roston. One of the best soundtracks ever. Fight me in the comments if you don't, if you can think of a better arcade soundtrack than Roston. Now, I'm sure there are, but that's just one of my favorites. So, anyway, so we'll see a little footage of that. And uh, yeah, I hope you're liking this so far. I'm having fun. I hope you are. All right, we're back in the garage. It's uh, July 26th. We've actually picked up something new today. Spent a couple hundred bucks on a um, Neo Geo system. It's a four slot system and uh, it's got a lot of work to do, but we got it for pretty cheap, a couple hundred bucks. Had a free monitor. We're gonna see if that works out in it and this is what it looks like. As you can see, the monitor looks pretty great. Needs a marquee. I, say, I should say the video game system looks great. Uh, the controls look really good. It does need to be cleaned up. Last time it was running or at least registered is 2005. Good on this side too. All right. Let's see if we can get a up and running Neo Geo system. Get some Metal Slug and Samurai Showdown and whatnot. Yeah, really not much to that Neo Geo video there, but the next video is important to me from a standpoint that my grandfather is with me. And this is one of the only times my grandfather went with me uh, to do anything arcade worthy. Now, granted, he helped a lot by letting us use his truck constantly, uh, but this is my first arcade auction. And at this point, the spending, you'll hear me mention the pricing. I have went above my 500 twice at this point. Uh, so now I'm starting to do the thing with my wife where I'm saying, hey, uh, this is for November and this is for December spending. Like I'm spending months ahead. I'm I'm crediting my months here. So I'm going outside my $500 limit and I'm saying, I'm not gonna buy a game for two months now, which was impossible. If anyone has collected anything, it's very hard to keep yourself on that budget. And again, Thank God I didn't, or we wouldn't have the games that we do. But we're gonna talk here in the auction about a couple of games. Um, and one of them's on the floor in Big Buck Hunter. It's been here the whole time. Uh, and the other one, not so much. Uh, we've had three versions of this particular game and all of them gave us issues. So I've um, slowly worked them out of the arcade as of just a couple weeks ago. So uh, enjoy. Here, it's me and my grandfather. All right, Grandpa and I are at the arcade auction. We won a big buck hunter for 575. 
Right. And we shot a couple of bucks already. Oh, he killed some bucks. <laughs> Here's a big buck hunter. Actually, it's a pretty cool machine. Good looking. Works. Both guns. Calibrated good. Good sound. Good screen. That's right. Today's auction was a success. We got Need for Speed Underground. Cost us about 550 bucks. And it's fully working. No real need to work on it too much. And we got the big buck hunter here for 575. So pretty cool. The arcade's coming together. So what's really cool about that, other than me getting to spend time with my grandfather for the day, uh, which we haven't got a lot. He doesn't leave the house much anymore. So this was one of the last times that we really got out and got to do anything. Uh, but one of the nice things was uh, we uh, went in there. We didn't know what to expect. We had a lot of fun. God, we had to wait forever to bid on something. And uh, here's that big buck hunter. It is still on the floor. It's a great game for us. People play it all the time. It's all turned off right now because this video would be way too loud if the whole arcade was on. Um, like I said, the need for speed, it was cool. It looked so cool and I was so excited at the time. But over time, the excitement wore off after having to work on uh, those computers that come in those uh, global VR games. They're kind of a pain in my backside. So, um, yeah, that was the, that's that footage. I didn't plan on buying Big Buck Hunter that day. I didn't even think about it. Um, you know, it wasn't one of the games on my main list. But while we were waiting, me and him had so much fun playing it uh, that we were like, okay, let's bid on this thing. I mean, if we're having this much fun and we are neither one of us are hunters, uh this is gonna be a blast for people in the arcade and we were right that was a that was actually a great purchase for us that day it was the best purchase uh it was the first auction so it was our best purchase of the day considering the other games not even here uh the next game that we're going to talk about was the first game that i fully restored and was super excited about and it ended up being a combination of a couple of games um uh, let's see what it is well we picked up a new arcade today it is the 17th of August, and we got a little bit of a restore to do here. But we got a dedicated Mortal Kombat 2, which is exciting. This one, sadly, at some point, was turned into a police trainer, which I recently played at a recent auction. And I don't think that game's very good. I think it kind of sucks. So I'm glad this one is. looks like it was on its way to be converted back into an MK2. And after I'm done with it, I don't think you'll be able to tell the difference. So that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Uh, until the next one. Well, we had a choice of when upgrading Mortal Kombat 2 to either buy the new artwork for the side. So as you can see, it's completely missing on this side or it's underneath paint. It's going to be tough to get off. We try to do it on that side. And it's kind of butchered because they sanded it before they uh, painted it so the paint would stick a little better so we're gonna have to buy new artwork for 200 bucks or we just bought a whole new machine for 200 bucks a soul edge that works and there we go it's adding to the collection i'm gonna swap the boards and everything out so we have the side art for mk2 we do have a little paint we need to get off the top so we can get that mk2 logo back so but other than that pretty cool and then we'll have a soul edge and a mk2 in a mortal kombat 2 dedicated cabinet so until next time at this point we're starting to accumulate games and i'm feeling a lot better about this uh this is our first uh fighting game that we were able to get and i was so excited because mortal kombat 2 if it's not my favorite fighting game, it's like 1A, 1B with something else. Right now, I've been playing a whole lot of Third Strike. I'm still terrible at it, but I actually do enjoy playing that a lot, too. But Mortal Kombat 2 holds such a special place in my heart. Um, me and my uh, brother, uh, Chris uh, uh, Topher, he's my best friend. And uh, he, we used to ride on the bus and go play this game. And I remember his brother telling us all kinds of lies about this game because he was the first one to see it. Uh, he was actually telling a whole lot of truth too, but they all sounded like lies when he was talking about babalities and friendships and we just thought he was full of crap. But anyway, uh, as you can see in the video, it's kind of a, a 
I had to cobble two together to make one. Let's go look at that Mortal Kombat 2. I think it's one of the nicest Mortal Kombat 2s out there in the uh, in the Metroplex. You know, the, it has a great monitor on it. Uh, it's never given us much problem. Later on in these videos, I'll actually put a Mortal Kombat 1 board in there, but uh, I, we end up picking up a Mortal Kombat 1. So uh, here's our MK2. And as you can see, it's quite nice. I like to put the move sets on the sides. I don't know why more, you know, free, uh, you know, arcades that have their game set to free, they don't do that. A little side art picture there, how we did the control panel. And this is after two years of play in here. What's really cool is uh, this art is all original here. It was covered in uh, black paint and uh, a nice looking machine. Yeah, it really came out good. I uh, love Mortal Kombat 2. We've had so many great memories with regulars here playing that game. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we, we just enjoy putting these things back together, as you can see from some of our videos. And I love that I saved at least a little bit of footage. We're really starting to jump around in the videos a little bit. There are going to be some that mention other games. you will see other games in the background. I started doing a poor job of documenting at this point. It was everything I could to just kind of get all this going. So, uh, or I was just lazy. I don't know. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about the next game and we want to talk about a total transformation. Uh, I can't wait for you to see what this looked like at the beginning. Well, we got a free one today. It's my mom's birthday. Say happy birthday, mom. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that not make any sense. That's okay. We got a free Simpsons today. It is in some rough shape, but pretty decent for free. And it looks like it has a monitor in it. Last time it was up and running was, or at least registered, was 06. Got a lot of work to be done on it, but you can't beat free. So uh, it'd be worth it to try to get some of this paint off of it and see if there's some artwork underneath. Got some progress in the barn. Got a big cleaned out spot here. And got all the games going here. Just what's in here. Still got a few back at the house, but starting to come together. Got a lot of work to do on that Area 51. Totally got to redo that Simpsons. Big Buck. Asteroids Deluxe. And need for speed underground pretty cool what a cool shot seeing that simpsons where it was to where it is now let's take a peek of that we saw it a little bit here just a second go with the mortal Kombat. but uh man i was proud of the return on this one uh there's a video way at the end of this where we're actually putting the marquee on it and uh you know again i wish i had shot more video i'm glad i shot what i did uh so this is what the simpsons turned out looking like and i mean beautiful side art and everywhere you go and you see a Simpsons at other arcades, a lot of times they have the original side art on it. I didn't have that option. I would have kept it, uh, but mine was completely painted black, as you can see. And uh, we did some cool little mods. We like to do little mods like these little, uh, oh, the little dust covers here that are donuts. I think that's really, really neat. Um, anyway, I put that plastic thing on it. It didn't hold up over time. It actually kind of warped a little bit. Uh, we got the little free play buttons at the front here. Uh, and I'm sure there's ROMs or something by now, but the side art just came out so cool. And that's one of our prettiest games is The Simpsons. Um, that marquee, it always bothered me. It was a little different color when the lights are on. I mean, sorry, when the lights are off in it, but when the lights are on, you don't tell. It's like made that way. And uh, man, just came out great. And you get to see, I love that this footage is still there and we can see some of it before these games were, you know, the classics that they are sitting here in the electric starship arcade uh you know we just i love that about that anyway uh let's look to this next video here we're gonna get back into the area 51 that crumbled in the truck on us uh so let's see just the original emotions uh from when this game kind of came back to life so it's 3 17 in the morning <laughs> My brother and I are here in the arcade barn at the moment. The goddamn and arcade dungeon. <laughs> we got this ridiculous showcase cabinet, Area 51, maximum force up and running. Oh my God. And it was a nightmare. So, so just the fact 
that it's running is a miracle. It actually looks pretty decent. We got some adjustments, obviously, and just a shit ton of work here, but fun. Next to look at is The Simpsons that doesn't look like The Simpsons. <laughs> Till next time. Currently working on the Area 51 Maximum Force Machine. Gonna get that looking good. All right, so we have Area 51. We've got the, trying to get that marquee in. Got the marquee up on it. Got the really cool uh, fence with the Area 51 sign. Like, looks like you're outside of Area 51. Yeah, that's a real metal uh, sign too. Awesome. And we got lighted buttons. We got LEDs in there that match the guns. So she's coming back to life. You know, it's not the prettiest game in the collection, but it works and it's awesome. What is going on? Area 51. Tate's playing it right now. This is that one that fell and broke in half. We got colored buttons to match the guns. We got a little custom art here with the fence line. Area 51 side. And we got a little ways to go, but uh, it's definitely looking better. I love that, that part of the video because there's uh, this hilarity of us being up so late, uh, you know, at three o'clock in the morning laughing. Also, you get to see the first lineup of arcade games, uh, the early days. And when you first start seeing a line of games going together, it's the first time you really start feeling like, oh my gosh, this is actually coming together. It's starting to work. Um, yeah, the, just rebuilding that Area 51 was fun just because of the disbelief. And, th and that was the first time I think my brother looked at me and was like, okay, th he's going to put anything together at this point, uh, which was kind of a neat a realization. I love the different people in my life that after a certain stage where I'm working toward these goals, they start believing in me, uh, you know, more than they did. And they always did, but you know, they support, but the actual vis visualization is, is really neat. Um, this next part is like the biggest score and one of the biggest scores still to this date that really solidified a lot of the vintage uh, arcade machines. And what's really cool is we'll be able to go around and see a lot of these still on the floor. All right, this should be the last arcade pickup of the year. Uh, we got some good projects here. We got a punch out, a joust. We also got a Donkey Kong. Just needs a recap on the monitor. And we got a Robotron that needs some work, obviously. A Pac-Man, the marquee over there, and we got a Tron. So, and this uh, Bubble Checks Hockey that probably gonna go to the street. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see how these work. So we can get them off the truck without destroying them. Let's go take a look at those games. Uh, those were, it was like the most exciting find. Uh, the guy, a really fun story. Went in this guy's house. He had vacated it a couple of years before, hadn't been back. He went to Houston on a business trip. He meets a girl, falls in love, never goes home, stays in Houston. So these machines are just sitting in his house um, and mail stacking up outside the door. Uh, really, really pretty crazy. So the first thing here uh, we'll look at is our punch out. And as you can see, punch out, maybe you can see the side art in there. Uh, and punch out's been a staple on the floor this whole time. Uh, and yeah, it turned out really, really good. It's there. And let's go check out what's another one we saw in that video. We saw a Tron. Our Tron turned out beautiful. There's going to be more footage of this Tron as we revive it. Now that Tron was breaking into four pieces. We'll end up putting straps around it. You may be able to see them in the video there. But this is our Tron. Uh, it came out really, really good. I have toppers on it. This team molding I put on actually glows. Uh, it's a little faded now. I'm a dog gunner trying to be a star. Uh, but anyway, got the toppers on it. Did a lot of cool mods. We're going to see that later in the video. You can see new side art. And uh, man, that just came out really, really solid. Um, one of the prettiest trons you'll ever see, I would say. And it's really, really turned out nice. All right, next one, Donkey Kong. 
Uh, we got our Donkey Kong. Of course, you got to have Donkey Kong if you have an arcade. It's on the floor. It got new side art. It got its monitor recap, the new team molding, and just turned out to be a really, really great machine. What's another one? Oh, Pac-Man. Oh, goodness gracious. So Pac-Man, you'll see here. Man, that was a lot of work. Oh, God, you can't see nothing in this dark light over here. Anyway, Pac-Man. I can make that lighter. I don't know how to do it. Anyway, no fun. Uh, Joust is right beside it. That's another one that uh, we're not picking up at all. Anyway, Joust, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Robotron was another one. Robotron turned out to be a great game. We'll see that a little bit more here in the future. And uh, if you want to, if you love Robotron, check out Ryan's uh, Robotron Restore video we did. This one's featured in it as well. Uh, this one has its original side art. I didn't really want to mess with the original there. Uh, really fun. Um, so anyway, let's go back and look and see what the next video is because I'm so ill-prepared uh, now that I'm sitting here making this video. I think the next part of this is when we get a $40 battle zone working and uh, you're not going to actually see the battle zone. Uh, you'll get to see the screen. Uh, and then from there, me and Brett go on a little bit of a road trip for a game that's never made the floor, uh, but the footage is there. It just shows a friend riding with me and us having fun. Hey baby, look, I fixed battle zone. Let's uh, give it a coin real quick. A little start button. Look. Tank. Oops. <laughs> it's hard to do without the two hands. Okay. There's a tank and boom! Pretty cool, right? All right, it's Brett and Mike. We just picked up a San Francisco Rush machine to add to the collection. Uh, 100 bucks, pretty good deal. Let's see if we can't turn this thing around. It is actually in really good shape. Uh, may need a little monitor work, but the side art is really good. It's actually relatively clean. Like I said, for a little well, chip in the back there, but for a hundred bucks, pretty good deal. Yeah, it's a real shame. We've still never got that Rush the Rock on the floor. One day it's gonna make its tits spin four years I've had that game and it's still sitting in the back. Uh, it doesn't even need much. I just never had a really good spot to put it in. Uh, the battle zone, fun story on that is I saw it on OfferUp, which we never find anything or if OfferUp is even a thing anymore. I think it might have merged with, oh, it wasn't OfferUp. It was uh, Let Go. That merged with OfferUp at some point. And then there was Five Mile. I found it on one of those. It was $40. So we drove like a maniac, picked it up. It was local. Uh, and then we got it back here and I got it working. Uh, it's in my office right now. It's just been rotated off the floor. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. So we're about to look at, uh, you're going to start seeing these videos jump around and you'll see other games in the background. I'm trying to like group them together somewhat because, um, what would happen is anyone that's done this before had multiple arcade games, you kind of start working on the projects at different times or you're working on something while paint's drying or you run into an issue where you need a part and you have to order it. So you just move on and start working on other things. So that's why these videos will start kind of skipping around. So this next part, let's, let's see what games we get in it. I don't think half guns will work with All right, so today, we actually got a classic here. We got House of the Dead 2. The brother's playing it. It's in good shape. May have a little work to do on the guns. The screen's actually working good. Marquee, just a little touch up. We'll touch up paint here and there. But uh, it's looking sharp. A couple other updates. Got a Guitar Hero, works great. Needs a little touch up paint here and there and the marquee's busted. Gotta fix that. I also have Ghosts and Goblins. That actually works really good as well. Hey, looks like my mom and Tate are playing the House of the Dead 2 game. Oh. Pretty awesome. 
in good shape. It's a great update there. House of the Dead 2. Uh, I wanted that game so bad. Me and my Tate went on a cold morning and drove and got this game. You can see he's all bundled up. And remember guys, this arcade barn had no central heat and air. It had no air conditioning, uh, definitely didn't have a heater. So in the winter, we'd be so bundled up working in there and we'd be freezing. We did this for three years to put this arcade together. Uh, in the summer, it would be hot. I don't mind the heat. Like I love it actually, so it doesn't really bother me. Uh, the other games we see in this part is Ghost and Goblins and uh, Guitar Hero. I had no idea Guitar Hero was going to shoot up so much in price, and I got this one for a really good deal. Um, let's look at those on the floor really quick, because all those games are present. You know, House of the Dead, it's right over here by um, the by the area 51 maximum force that's featured here but we also put this cool zombie on top of it there used to be a zombie header that was made of plexiglass and uh you know obviously it wasn't on ours but uh, you can actually see its hand here which is kind of cool it makes it look even more 3d but i found this like lawn zombie and we put him on top uh and he looks great you know little ads that will just do something for the arcade which i, I love that uh so what else do we have? Oh, Guitar Hero. Man, you want to talk about a game that gets a lot of play, and it's a pretty good workhorse and holds up really well. It's Guitar Hero. Um, this game gets just a ton of play. I need to clean the monitor on that game. It's gotten dirty uh, over the weekend. Uh, obviously, we haven't opened yet, so we still do a few things before we get started for the day. And then finally, Ghosts and Goblins. Now, Ghosts and Goblins went straight on the floor. It's been a good game on the floor ever since. Uh, the only thing we've done since then, I think it got a cap kit along the way somewhere. And uh, the CPO, uh, we redid it. It had a lot of artwork missing right here in this area. And then we put this cool uh, neon green tea molding on it. I liked that because it really matched the uh, green in the grass here. Uh, so pretty cool. That's a great game. And uh, one that you actually just don't see a whole lot, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, out there. And uh, it's all original, you know. I don't think it's ever, it was never converted to anything else. Uh, it just turned out really, really good, I think. So, anyway. Uh, so, it, I love this trip because we're getting to see this arcade really come together. I like seeing my mom, you know, in, the, in some of this footage because she was so integral at giving us space to hide these games until we were ready to open. You know, and the original plan when we were ready to open was, uh, you know, if I hate this and don't love this arcade and this community and, and uh, just, I would sell all these and make more money after restoring them. And speaking of restoration, I wish, I have a lot of photographs of the journey of this Pac-Man that we're about to look at. Um, but it turned out so good because we did stenciling on it. And you'll see a little bit of that in the background of some of the other uh, footage here. But this is just the very first time I tried to turn it on and get it going. And a lot of this footage jumps now from my garage at my house to the warehouse. Because I'd work in the warehouse any chance I got. But the garage at my house is when I'd wake up at you know, 3.30, 4 in the morning and start working before I had to go into my full-time job at the time. So I'd work all the way till seven o'clock and start taking a shower and, you know, get ready to drive to Dallas to, to go to work. Uh, but this is what I would do. I would, you know, stay up really late at night, get a few hours of sleep, wake up really early in the morning and kind of get these games all cleaned up and ready to go. Let's check out Pac-Man and its early days of trying to come back and be worth something. It's the game I tried to leave behind on that lot there. It is January 10th. <clears throat> this is a, a Pac-Man machine I got in a lot. As you can hear, the game is running. Somebody painted it a very wrong, ugly yellow. Uh, good news is uh, I do have a running board on it. I can hear it move. We have uh, <laughs> some vertical collapse and also a video sync problem. We got a long way to go on this thing. Controls seem to work, or somewhat. But I won't know until I really get into digging into this monitor here. Needs marquee, bezel. I do have a few of these items on hand. 
you know, no side art. I've ordered a stencil set for it. Uh, but we have a long journey here. Uh, there is no back door. <clears throat> I already put a switching power supply in there. Um, I tried to rebuild the other power supply, but it was busted. Uh, I do have a color yellow to match with the speckles on the back. And uh, we're going to see what we can do with this old guy. Uh, like I said, it's quite a journey though. <laughs> but we have it ahead of us. But I think we can do it. Well, we have progress. We have Miss Pac-Man on the Pac-Man here. And it's just scrolling. But it does work. So we got something going anyway. Till next time. I got the vertical lock or the horizontal frequency lock fixed. I have some weird colors, but we don't have a scrolling screen anymore. I did a jumper between the vertical and the horizontal pins on the interface board. So we have a good a working Batman. Weird colors, at least it's working. Miss Batman. Till next time. All right, I'm back. I'm looking like a dork because I got my headlamp on here, but I want you to be able to see this Pac-Man in the dark, and I really don't have lights over there um, because we light, we don't have a lot of light in our arcade, even our work light. I do have a work light that actually runs here, but it's going to hot spot the heck out of this whole area. So anyway, let's go check out this Pac-Man and uh, see, you know, what I finally ended up with after the stenciling and everything, because this was one that was just a full-on restore. Oh, yeah, you can see it's a lot better. So the marquee is original. The CPO, it's so funny because this is like worn down. I had this painted. This is how much it gets played. Brand new uh, control panel overlay there. Uh, the stencil work was really, really a tough thing to do. And uh, it came out really good though. I mean, this is all painted on. Uh, and I hope y'all can appreciate that because <laughs> it was a pain. I think I spent 40 hours restoring this Pac-Man, you know, painting it back to the yellow it's supposed to be, um, getting the, uh, all this artwork just right. And to get these like little bitty, um, little bitty sections and these little dots and all this little, it's supposed to look jagged in certain areas, which is really hard to pull off, but uh, it turned out such to be such a good looking game. Uh, I, th I do think the bezel is original, which, you know, came out, which I was really happy that, to get that. Uh, but you saw what it looked like. It was absolutely terrible. <laughs> I didn't even want to bring this game back home with us. So... Uh, anyway, that's Pac-Man. I'll take off the lamp there. I, I think it would be a shame not to show that stencil art after I spent all that freaking time working on it. Uh, and then you'll see it in my game room here and a uh, little bit of footage. Uh, not much left in this video. Uh, let's see the next games that we get. Hey, honey, check it out. I made the marquees work. So that was our Neo Geo. That's when I first realized you could replace the little EL panels. Uh, I don't know if that's what they originally were, but that's what they were replaced with. Those do eventually go out. Uh, me and my daughter have replaced some recently. There's another one that just went out. Uh, it's funny because I just buy one and then now I just bought a package of them so I can like take care of these as they go. So that's, that's one we gotta fix, you know, here relatively soon. The uh, other thing you see, you do see the Pac-Man in the background with a little bit of the different color stencils uh, going after I started working on that. And uh, then finally, uh, we're gonna see where we get, get one more big hitter before this part one is over. It's March 24th and we are in the arcade barn. There's my brother Tate. Our latest pickup is the Star Wars Trilogy arcade machine. It's actually in good working order. Not any, uh, not much to fix or a little touch up here and there and it is ready to roll. We've got quite a few machines since the last videos. 
Uh, Mortal Kombat 4 hiding back there in the light. Spiders, Ghosts and Goblins, House of the Dead 2, Blitz, Guitar Hero, as you can see, and some classics back here. So, to be continued. New to the game room. Uh, pictures aren't where I want them, but the new lineup now. We've had Star Wars and Mortal Kombat, but Pac-Man, since it was fully restored, has made its way to the game room. And it is looking sharp. Well, great stuff. So we picked up Star Wars Trilogy. You can see Spiders worked its way in, which means there's an Outrun hiding in there. NFL Blitz has worked its way into the arcade. I mentioned a date. I mentioned a, a date in March, and that had to have been uh, March of 2018 at that point. So we're almost a year in, you know, June, July. So, yeah, we're, we're almost or April, May, June, July. We're almost a year in. We're nine-ish months in on our journey here. Uh, and the videos get a little more, even more sparse after this. So part two may not be as long as this first video. Uh, I do like to see the game room in my house. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I've got the Mortal Kombat 2 finished and it's in there and I've got the um, Pac-Man finished and it's in there. And you do get to see the original games that were part of the game room long before the whole I'm going to build an arcade uh, dream was, you know, coming out there. It was uh, just a pipe dream at that point. But you get to see uh, Star Wars, the original Vector Star Wars, which I've had for, oh my gosh, almost 20 something years. I've had that because I'm a big Star Wars collector. I've had that forever and I loved that game. It was my favorite game as a kid. It's still on the floor now. And you see Bubble Checks Hockey before it's been completely uh, obliterated here and rebuilt multiple times. So uh, anyway, nice to see that. I hope you've enjoyed this journey so far. This is part one. What do you think, guys? Uh, do you like seeing this old footage? Because we're going to do a part two. So you'll get to see a little bit more. Uh, please write comments down there. I love reading comments and I try to respond um, uh, the best I can. Uh, it is a journey uh, going through this and it is a lot sometimes to respond to all the emails and the comments and everything. So please forgive me if I'm a little slow on that or if I don't see it or just have a billion things to do. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like content like this and um, come to Electric Starship Arcade. We want to see you here. So until the next one, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you then.